break it free from the mainstream, the studio machine. I want it my way. Indie Film Nation, you know it's gotta be. Indie Film Nation. Mike Anthony Smith with another edition of Indie Film Nation. On today's program, we have Richard Walstoncroft, who's not a stranger to the program with this year's Muff. Yes, indeed. Good to see you. How are you? Good, Richard, and good. Now, to Muff, this year, what's yep. this year's uh, theme? The theme is the surface of things, which is taken from the uh, literary uh, work of Brett Easton Ellis, who's actually in Melbourne tonight, who I'm going to see. And um, it's basically about um, how... Uh, Brett's work is all about the superficial, you know what I mean? All about the clothes you wear and uh, how much money you have and uh, it's how that's the only thing that matters in the world anymore. It's kind of a critique of uh, materialism and capitalism, uh, but it's sort of a guilty critique in the sense that, like, you know, this may be all there is, but that's maybe okay or that's maybe kind of cool and you celebrate the nihilism of it. So um, we're doing a retrospective of the uh, work of Brett Easton Ellis, the four films that have been made from his books, and one of them is a premiere, which is The Informers, directed by Australian Gregor Jordan. So that's one to go along and see. And, and, and the choice of uh, Brett's uh, material, obviously that maybe pushes Muff into a little bit more uh, commercial grounds because uh, he's a, a, an established writer. Sure, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, the Melbourne Underground Film Festival is always, um, you know, are interested in, in more transgressive cinema independent cinema, um, things that have challenging ideas. It does not always mean stuff that is not commercial, you know. I mean, we, we really champion genre filmmaking, and genre filmmaking is commercial. So um, we have sometimes been criticised for that, but we also do, um, you know, like play a lot of the avant-garde and experimental stuff that really is very underground and doesn't have any commercial um, value, but, you know, mainly is shorts. You know, a, a lot of the features we champion really do have a, a potential market. A couple don't, but most yeah. do. And um, I think that's a good thing. I think that's what we need in this country, to see films that actually connect with an audience and films that, um, you know, could actually make some money. Yeah. yeah. And look, uh, this year, the uh, uh, opening night film uh, is uh, a, a, an interesting uh, film because it has, it, has, it has had a bit of a premiere yes. in Melbourne before. But just talk to us about uh, the, that particular film and, uh, and, and, and why you've chosen to kick off the festival this year with it. Stuart Simpson uh, was a really amazing um, independent filmmaker who um, came to us, I think, about three or four years ago with a film called Demons Among Us, um, and um, you know, we're very impressed. He reminded me of a kind of a young Peter Jackson. You know, it was like a kind of a, a very early uh, bad taste or something. And um, I just thought, you know, this guy's really got it going on. So, um, you know, we've played a couple of his shorts since, um, and this is his new feature, and he actually was silly enough to give me a cameo role in it. So, um, you know, uh, that was a lot of fun to do. And I just saw it as just a, a natural. I saw it at, a, at, a, at like a cast and crew preview screening at the Astor. And, um, you know, that was just fantastic. And, um, you know, it was like a full house, like the whole Astor. You know, like, you know, there, there were more people there than I'm sure saw most Australian, you know, like art house movies, you know, like in that one session yeah. than, than did maybe on one during their whole season, you know. So, um, you know, that was very impressive. And, uh, you know, it's got Norman Yem in it, who's fantastic. And... Uh, you know, some really kind of like kick-ass, Russ Meyer-esque kind of uh, sexy girls. And I just thought this is a, a real, you know, lay down Mazair for opening night of Muff. So that's what we did. And we've got some really cool shorts as well, one by Jason Turley and one by Tom Salisbury called Carrot, which is from an idea by Colin Savage. Ah, there we go. A very familiar name here on the yeah. program. But uh, look, and this year's, uh, what are some of the, 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 the feature highlights of this year's program? Oh, there are a number. Um, we've got some actually really amazing premieres. We've got Dean Francis's Road Train, which was funded by Screen Australia, had a budget of over a million dollars, and uh, stars Xavier Samuel, who was in bloody Twilight, for God's sake. Um, so this is like a kind of like a, you know, like big truck on the loose chasing people, a bit like uh, Spielberg's Jewel, yep. and uh, except set in Australia and out back, and uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. That's one to watch. We've got Johnny Knoxville sent in a film uh, called The Wild Whites of West Virginia which is a lot of fun. Uh, hang on a sec, I'll just have a quick look here. Yeah, that's, all. that's all right, Richard. Refer to your notes yeah. that you made a little bit earlier. Of course, 
Yeah, no, sorry. The Wild and Wonderful Whites of West Virginia. Yeah. See, I did get it wrong. I'm glad I checked. But Johnny Knoxville is the executive producer, which is like about white trash in uh, in in West Virginia, and just them, you know, they're involved in crime and they're just complete scumbags. But it's hilarious. You know what I mean? People have said it's racist, but against white people, which I thought I've got to play that. That's classic. Um, we've got um, a really amazing film called Bad Bush by Sam Giannacci, which is kind of like. Um, you know, crime and kind of biker gangs, which I think is really topical at the moment considering what's been going on in Australia. Burlesque is a really sexy kind of um, kinky, um, burlesque dances, um, gore, you know, all that kind of stuff. Dark Souls is a really amazing film as well. Um, Blondes in the Jungle. Then you've got my own Heart of Lightness, which is that documentary. Now, I was going to mention that. I see that in the program, yep. and, and uh, it's always been one, the, the, the prickly question for the person who's running the film fest mm. about entering their uh, their own, own material. Yeah, yeah. But uh, can you just chat to us, what what is Heart of uh, Lightness about? Um, I actually went to Uganda last year, and um, Ebony Butler um, was shooting a documentary, and um, she wanted me to accompany her to, to also shoot a kind of secondary documentary on, on the trip. And um, my first reaction was, I'm not going to Uganda, that's fucking dangerous. And, um, <coughs> sorry everyone, I got a yeah. cold by the way, so you can kind of hear that now. So anyway, but I, I thought, I don't know, I went away and after about two weeks I thought, no, no, um, I will go, you know what I mean? And um, I said, look, if you get the money up, I'll go. So, um, you know, there's about kind of like a three to six months delay. And then um, in about the middle of 2009, um, we flew to Thailand and then on to... Um, onto Uganda. And really it was amazing. In the south, it's it's quite safe. It's kind of um, like, um, probably like Thailand was 20 years ago. I went to Thailand when I was 20, so I remember what it was like then and um, it reminded me a bit of that. It's kind of a burgeoning economy, a lot of poor people, but there's something going on there, you know what I mean? Like, I think it's going to be a, you know, Winston Churchill called it the Pearl of Africa. And uh, Idi Amin was a big fan of Uganda, of course, strong African nationalist and very popular, actually, Idi Amin. Still to this day, I got a book over there called The Other Side of Idi Amin, and it's all the good things he did. Not a very long book, but, um, you know, I, I did get it and I brought it home with me and it was a lot of fun. So anyway, then we, uh, we, we were lucky we were protected by um, a company called Dine Corporation, which is sort of like um, Blackwater or Halliburton, but put together. You know what I mean? They're a really big, they supply all the military supplies and food to the United Nations in Africa and also Afghanistan, the American army in Afghanistan. So that's how big they are. They're big. And um, we got picked up at the airport by the military. We, we, got, we were staying in a beautiful kind of like mansion in Kampala with armed guards on the doors. I was really in my element. And um, so I'm documenting all this stuff. And then, but when we went north, we were kind of on our own, you know what I mean? And um, there, it's just kind of wilder, you know what I mean? And um, up until about two or three years ago, it was very, very dangerous. Like, you'd probably be killed. Um, we wouldn't have come back, probably. But now, the, the, the army that had been causing trouble was called the Lord's Resistance Army, and they have now been pushed up into the Democratic Republic of the Congo, which is neither democratic nor a, <laughs> nor a republic, but it is a Congo. And... Um, and so most of the, the violence was gone, but we were told not to go around at night because of bandits and things, but we still drove around at night. And I think, you know, we had a few close calls where we were, we were there and, the, you know, we had like, you know, $30,000 worth of camera equipment. And this is more than these people would make, you know, in the entire life for the village. So, you know, a um, couple of times we were taking, you know, it was a little hairy, but um, I just thought it was fascinating. I documented everything. And so this is the rough cut of that, basically. Yeah. Well, um, and, and what else is uh, the, obviously, uh, Muff Mini, which is the short film program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many, how many uh, we have pro- six programs? Sessions. Yep. We have six sessions of shorts and, um, you know, an, an extra one this year. And, um, I mean, that's always really popular, I think. And Muff shorts are really fantastic, you know what I mean? Like, um, they, we pick a lot of, the, you know, the kind of shorts you don't normally see at, you know, Tropfest or they're not, they're not politically correct. They don't suck. You know what I mean? They're really good. They're really interesting. And um, many of the, uh, I think, the filmmakers that then go on to make really interesting features have had their uh, initial work played at Mini Muff. I mean, Greg McLean was one of them. Um, the Spearig brothers uh, were another one who made Daybreakers recently. So, um, you know, a lot of the, I guess, the, if you want to see the, the latest talent, come and see Mini Muff, which is at all at 1,000 pound band and, you know, is always very popular. So, and of course, the closing night is a, is a, is a classic this year, which is Bad Behaviour which is um, starring John Jarrett from uh, Wolf Creek and Roger Ward, who was in um, Turkey Shoot, of course. And Mad Max. And Mad Max, of course. <laughs> and uh, which is a really amazing closing film uh, on the closing night, yeah.
Yeah. And and this year's uh, venues, um, uh, where where, have, where are we going to this year? Because uh, slight venue change, but uh, still at uh, one of the more art house cinemas in Melbourne. Yeah, definitely. We're using the classic cinema in Alstonwick, which is um, a really great cinema. I went to a, a friend's film screening there about two or three months ago, and I just thought it was a great cinema. And uh, I know John Cerrone, who's a friend of John Hewitt, so we set that up, and um, you know, it's uh, it's fantastic down there with Malala and the team. And we're also using Shed 4, which is open channel, with Martin, so we've got an open channel connection this year, which is great. That's where we're doing our closing night and other screenings. And, uh, and of course, this 1000 Bound Ben, which is owned by uh, Jerome from St. Jerome's, which is a really hip um, venue. They used it for Next Wave, so I've really tried to come through on the venues this year. And, um, you know, I scaled my back a bit, you know what I mean? There's not as many retrospective sections, um, but I think it's, it, it's, it's leaner and meaner, you know what I mean? We've put in more Australian content, um, more short sessions, uh, really kick ass opening, closing night. Um, and then, of course, we've got this Bruce LeBruce screening, which is the uh, little naughty edition. And, uh, and, and, and mentoring on that, people will obviously have to uh, join up uh, Facebook and, uh, yes. and, and, and Twitter. And yeah. yeah, no, we've, we've, got, we've gone Facebook and Twitter this year. It's all on our website. So, um, yeah, we're going to play uh, Bruce LeBruce's LA Zombie, which is banned uh, by, the, uh, by the censors who don't, haven't got a clue what they're doing. And um, so we just thought, fuck that, basically. And uh, let's do a little public disobedience screening and see if we can get away with it, basically. So we're going to keep the venue secret, and um, you know, and that's that. And then, you know, as soon as it's um, announced, 24 hours, we've already got like three, four hundred people on the list. So, I mean, the venue's only going to fit about 200. So, you know, if we get half of them along, I think we'll be doing fine. And and is there a competition? I believe you've got uh, a little competition running yep. with Canon. Yeah, yeah, we've got. A, I mean, the Canon camera. We were given a Canon uh, XLH1 camera this year, which is fantastic because. Um, and we're all going to be able to use it, the whole team from Muff, to make our own projects. And we're also, the major prize this year is the use of this camera. Um, you know, if someone wants to make a feature, they can have it for four to six weeks and make their new project on it. So it's like Muff getting involved as a production entity. And we've also got a competition uh, going with uh, Movie Extra, which uh, if you go to muff.com.au and follow the links, you can uh, join that. So there's a lot of good sponsors coming on board. And I think Muff's really interesting. It's a real year of transition. And uh, I think, you know, you'll eventually see Muff become the, the Sundance of, of, of Australia one day, you know, if we uh, get our act together. So. Or, or maybe Slam Dance. Yeah, that's true. Maybe <laughs> Slam Dance. Yeah, yeah. But uh, where can people find out more about uh, this year's festival, uh, the web address? Yes, muff.com.au is the best place to go. And uh, just join up to our newsletter. Or, or especially go to our Facebook group. That's where you get all the dirty gossip. Yeah. And uh, Richard, good luck on this uh, year's festival. I want it my way, Indie Film Nation. Going all the way, Indie Film Nation. You know it's got to be.